Hey, good to see you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another 30-30 challenge that's at you right now, the 30-30 challenge. And um, so I hope that uh, you are engaging with us. I hope that uh, you can see everything that's going on. Uh, but yeah, we're in the 30-30 challenge. I don't know. I thought I might have a little bit of some issues with my internet, but I think we're back on. So uh, here we are. So 30-30 challenge. If you are doing this with us, we're going through the Cornerstones book, which I'm pulling it out of the bag today for you to see. That's right. Going through the Cornerstones book. Look, I got to tell you, the content in here, whether you are a family doing this with your kids or whether you're just watching these, I mean, it's good stuff. So we're going to start off and uh, let's get on with it. So let's figure out where we're going to be. Well, so today's question uh, is going to be question 19 in the Cornerstones book. So let's go over to question 19 and figure out what it's all about. Here we are. Question 19 uh, in the book is what does it mean that God is true. Uh, what does it mean that God is true? So um, let's let's go because I, there's not really a good way to explain kind of what this question even means without kind of knowing the answer. When we go to the answer, then we can kind of go back and have a better understanding of what we mean by that. Because we don't, I mean, I don't know, when we say to each other, there, you are so true, I don't know. I think that's harder to kind of grasp. But let's go and find out what we're trying to get at with the answer and then go back to try to understand it. So what does it mean that God is true? Well, here's the answer. The answer to this question means uh, that God is true, means that all that he speaks and does is true. And he is the standard of truth. All right. So think about that now. So what we're talking about, what does it mean that God is true? It means that all that he says, all that he speaks and does is true, and he is the standard of truth. So when we talk about true, we mean it really in two major ways, right? Of who he is in his character, that he is true in what he does, what he says, uh, and then also the he is the standard of that. So all of that, of that, and then we also have the words, right, that come from that character. And so that has big implications for how we live our life, understanding of the Bible, and some of this stuff will get fleshed out in other questions in the book. But let's look at a couple of these verses then uh, that kind of illustrate the point uh, that God is true. So one of the first ones comes from Jeremiah 10.10. 10. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and eternal king. The earth quakes at his wrath, and the nations cannot endure his fury. You are to say to them, the gods that did not make the heavens and the earth will perish from the earth and under these heavens. So right there, it's really clear that when it talks about that he is the true God, uh, it's meaning that there is no other God besides the God of the Bible. So as Christians, we need to understand that when we talk about what does it mean that God is true, we mean that there are no other gods. You know, as we have affirmed or going through these earlier questions, we affirm that God is three in one. But he's not three gods in one. He is three persons in one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But there are no other gods. There might be others. And I love how Jeremiah lays that out. Notice what he says. Say to the other gods that did not make the heavens and the earth, understanding that everybody else might have a different view of, of gods and they're polytheistic. But he's saying that none of them actually are the God of the Bible. None of them come close. They didn't do any of these things. They aren't true. And they're all going to perish one day as well. Um, notice another verse that we get that comes from John chapter 17 and it says this, this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God and the one you have sent Jesus Christ. Okay. So this is the other thing that we talk about that not only is he God, uh, of the Bible, but it's Jesus is the true God. And so this is really interesting and really clear for us to know as Christians that we talk about the true God, we must stand on the fact that there are no other gods. That is, is as much as it may pain you to say to that friend of yours who worships another God, um, that's not the God of the Bible. That's not the true God. You know, here's another thing. There are a lot of people who talk about who Jesus is. 
unless he is the Jesus of the Bible, that's not the true Jesus. That's not the true God. And so we need to be very clear on that. And one of the ways that we can know is that now let's look at the other piece of this, right? How do we know who the true God is? How do we know who Jesus is? If not from the word of God, it says in, this is in Titus 1, 2, in the hope of eternal life that God who cannot lie promised before time began. So that's something that you and I need to gather is that the implication of this is that if God is true and everything about him is he's the one true God, then the other piece of him is he is true in everything that he says. Now, this is another piece about his character. Notice that when we go back to this question, right, it goes and we understand that everything that he, that means all that he speaks and all that he does is true, and he is the standard of truth. So we need to recognize this is that God cannot lie. So everything in the Bible comes from the word of God, meaning he's always true. But think about that, and this might be a way, if you're teaching this to your kids, think about how you and I are not true in all that we do, right? You think about that. I mean, my kids ask me things to do every day, and my answer is always, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. I'll make sure I do that. And then I'm always confronted in the morning how I actually never did anything that I said I was going to do. Because usually they make a request of me and um, I say, yeah, but now I'm eating ice cream and I'm watching a show. And that their request that they asked of me is usually the last thing on my mind when I'm unwinding. See, the God of the Bible doesn't forget. The God of the Bible doesn't say he's going to do something and do something else. Uh, I, I do not have the capacity to always be true. I, my sinful nature also bubbles up in that. And, and so even my yeses and my yeses are not always, uh, my yeses and noes are not always yes and no. I mean, I, I, I vacillate sometimes too, but the God of the Bible is true in everything that he does. He doesn't change. He's not one way today and then boom, you find him the next day. He's different. He is constant in who he is. He is always truthful all the time. And that's something we can really play out. I think this is a big point, is you can also point to your family to understand the, 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 the fallibility of an individual and the infallibility of God. Uh, I am someone who falls often, but God never will. And so we get the focus off how parents are, are still, as much as we want our children to follow and obey us, understand that we are fallen and the only answer is Jesus. But we should also take this and really drive it into the Bible, that the more that we can know about what it means to be who God is, needs to be given through the verses of Scripture. Even in your own family, if you might have older kids, they might be debating what God is really like. And, well, God wouldn't do this, or I don't know if I could worship a God who does this. Well, let's go to the text, and let's see what it says about who God is. Because God, we know, inspired the Bible. That's another topic we'll talk about as we go through cornerstones. But God is in charge of it. Those are his words that he breathed into the text. And if they're his, then they're all true. And if they're all true, it's what he wants us to know about his character and who he is. And he is the standard of truth. So let's end on that again. All that he speaks and does is true. And he is the standard of truth. All right, I hope that helps. And uh, I hope that this concept really kind of helps you out because it's going to be a big one of why inspiration is big. Uh, but let's, uh, let's talk about that another time. Start talking about how God is true and you and I can't even come close to that even on a daily basis. Uh, but isn't it good that we do have a God who is always true all the time in everything that he does. All that he speaks and does is true and he is the standard of truth. All right, God bless you guys. Talk to you later.